Let's get now to Tesla's tumble, the EV maker ending the week down nearly 11 percent after a big margin miss. Now there are new concerns from investors worried that Musk is stretched too thin, not paying enough attention to the automaker. So can the stock find its footing? Let's bring in the chart master, the one and only Carter Worth of Worth Charting here at the NASDAQ. Carter. Well, it was a bit of a tumble. And of course, it's the reciprocal or the equal and opposite action from the prior quarter, that gap up on the 26th of January, uh, euphoria. And this is the exact opposite. All I can think of here is like kind of what's the point of buying into Tesla when you've just had a setback like this? You know that for the past two months, people have been purchasing the stock basically between 180 and 210. Mm -hmm. And now you're sitting here at 165, which is to say, let's say it never goes lower. It's just so difficult to go higher. You've got money that's trapped that would love to come out of the bets that were made. Forget about bets from a year ago or two, but just have recently committed capital, and it's immediately wrong. We've all been in a situation, and usually, first loss, best loss, you want to get out. I think Tesla's sort of a, a dull duck here. The downside risk is to that 146 gap from the January earnings. 146. I, I know that you are an avid watcher of the show in general, Carter, so I'm wondering what you think of Dan Nathan's price target, which is like 60 something bucks a share. I is mean, it, is, no, is there. Is it? Yeah. Six zero? 60 something, yeah, 65. Well, 69. let's say it this way the path of 60 passes through 145. I mean, right. you've got 60, that's tomorrow's lunch. But that's I mean, way is, that, is that like I mean, another support it's very hard to know. lower than 140? Or? I mean, um, look, anything's possible. I think that's, uh, here's what I found is that when, just from over years, decades of publishing notes and clients, when you have something that's so outsized, they, you lose the audience. And not to say that Dan's audience is different than mine, but when I put out a note, a hedge fund manager, a pension plan, a family, they're like, Come on, you think it's going to triple from here? You think it's and, and, and so I, I try to have price targets that typically are where the imagination can allow. But listen, right. the imagination, maybe it's 60. <laughs> so let me ask you something. When you talk about given what's happened, is that just purely what's happened to the stock price as opposed to margins or cost cutting on cars, anything like It's just purely well, remember, this is technicals the, of the stock. Well, the, this sell off, right, is the equal and opposite of what happened over the preceding two years. So you have a stock that no one believes in, and analysts price targets are below the stock, and the stock keeps going up and up and up, and let's keep revising their price targets. And then, of course, the stock turns down, and now analysts are lowering and lowering the prices. It's just exactly the opposite of what happened, a great uh, unknown that's now known, right? The highest multiples, and you know this as a, as a manager, are always assigned before you actually start to put up earnings. Once you put up earnings, then we can do our DCF. The biggest multiples ever are always on biotech or technology stocks that have never made a profit because it's all a dream. Once you start to actually make the cars, produce the earnings, have real margins, the things you're talking about, then you can't have dreams anymore. You've got you to get real. So poetic. It is. It's great isn't it? It's so said. Yeah. Like I mean, <laughs> quote worthy. Uh, Jeff, I'm curious what your take is on, on the quarter, because there seems to be a real narrative change with this most recent earnings. They're, they're basically saying, you know, we're willing to fiddle around with price to, to boost sales. We're, we, we will do anything to price. We look at pricing every week. There are very few companies out there, particularly of, of big ticket items, that say we're going to look at pricing every single week and decide on that week what we're going to do with it. Yeah, maybe I'm wrong, but I thought I read something today that they tweaked uh, a couple of models a little bit higher, higher today yeah. after the move lower. So it's kind of all over the place. So it's hard to project what the margin profile is going to look like. And I think that that is maybe part of what uh, investors are struggling with right now in terms of the stock. But I ask myself, and obviously it's not an apples to apples comparison, but what are other car companies doing right now? Ford, GM, Toyota, they're all at the lows and they're all trading at seven times Ford and Tesla's trading at 40 times. Now, again, it, it, it shouldn't be trading at the same valuation, to be clear. But I think that that's an apt comparison in terms of where the stock can go. You know, I've been looking at similar levels to the upside at 206 to the downside at 155. I think it goes below 155. All bets are off. I think if it holds there, it can maybe drift to the top end of that range. But I think there's more risk to the downside here, just given some of those dynamics you're describing relative to prices and demand and margins. Just curious, how do the other automakers look on the charts? Carter? Just as described, uh, Ford, 52-week low, General Motors, Toyota. Now, that's not the case with Mercedes-Benz and BMW uh, uh, acting very well. 